Let's play, please. Exhibit A came in the second year of the new venue. A second round match at the 1979 U.S. Open pitting two high-strung geniuses. 20-year-old native son John McEnroe rapidly rising up the ranks up against a past U.S. Open champion, 33-year-old Ily Nastasi, hoping to squeeze a few more drops of glory. It's probably the craziest match in U.S. Open tennis history when you look at really what happened. You should tell the guy to don't talk to me when I play the point. He's going to put on fire. You talk about a circus. I mean, this was the circus of all circuses, where Nasty was going to do absolutely everything he could to get under my skin and just make it a, not a tennis match. It was just going to be some crazed event. Ironically, you know, Macro behaved impeccably in that match. You know, Macro had nothing to do with the antic. He was really all in the Stasi. He knew that his days were numbered. He was a big showman. He didn't have much chance against Macro. try to get you upset so he was just going to do everything in his power to sort of throw me off so i said let him dig his own grave i wasn't questioning calls i wasn't getting upset i was out playing him ball double ball game double. frank hammond one of the veteran umpires was calling that match nastasi started acting up he started losing himself and hammond tried to plead with him and and illy wouldn't respond time please Frank was one of those guys, like an NBA ref. He would talk to you. He'd go, come on, you gotta, you gotta pull it together here, or I'm gonna have to give you a warning. He, he would do that with me in other events, and Ely, begging Ely, please, Ely, play. I mean, literally, the guy would have gotten on his knees if he could have. I'm telling you right now, you play or it's a game. You have 30 seconds. You play or it's a game, right? Frank's having to impose the, the point penalty system, which results in eventually him disqualifying Nastassi. Game, set, match, McEnroe. But the crowd doesn't understand it. They think it's almost an arbitrary thing on Hammond's part, which was couldn't have been further from the truth. The crowd seemed as though it was going to rise out. They didn't want the match to end. They loved Nastassi. It was nearly a riot. They started throwing stuff on the court, pelting us with cups and throwing beer at us and screaming. You know, people had a couple pops by that time. This is 10, 30, 11 at night in New York. They're not having this. Finally, the tournament director, Bill Talbert, decided to appoint the referee, Mike Blanchard, to replace Hammond in the chair, which was a terrible blow to an excellent umpire, Frank Hammond. He overruled an umpire who had carried the, out the rules and said, we're putting another umpire in this chair and we're finishing the match. The only time in my career that that's ever happened, I, it's the only time that I can remember it ever happening. Beyond Nastassi's behavior, it, it essentially ruined Frank Hammond's latter day career. He'd been known as the premier umpire in the business and this really hurt his image and I think quite unfairly. But once Nastassi had whipped 20,000 people into a frenzy, toppled the reigning authority figure and drawn the police courtside following the 17-minute delay, even his emotions were spent. Game, set, and match. McEnroe handily ran out the match. And by the end of that year's tournament, John McEnroe had won the first of his four U.S. Open singles titles. Back in Corona Park, Queens, uh, site of the 1964 World's Fair. We are in a weather delay, but uh, we can say that it is brighter right now and raining uh, much lighter than it has earlier in the day. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Well, uh, night tennis made its Grand Slam debut at the 1975 U.S. Open, but four years later, it almost came to a halt after a controversial second-round match under the lights at Louis Armstrong Stadium. It's going to be great to hear the voices here of Pat Summerall, Tony Trabert, John Newcomb. They reported all that commotion was not about the tennis. It was about what we would call today a town hall meeting atmosphere. Mmm. Ely Nastasi against John McEnroe. This is Thursday night. Nastasi had just questioned uh, whether a serve was a let serve or not. And it's just tipped the let court judge's hat for him. A 
I don't think the lead court judge was impressed, as you can see by the look on his face here. And you know, you wonder why, why a gentleman should have to take that. I'm not so sure my reaction would have been as placid if he had done that to me. Now, what happened there? McEnroe served because the umpire, Frank Hammond, said, John, get, let's get play started. Just serve the ball. Right now. I'm telling you right now, you play or it's a game. You have 30 seconds. You play or it's a game, right? Nastassi's saying I wasn't ready. You can't you're serve when I'm not wait. ready. You're not talking to him. You're supposed to be playing tennis. Nothing to do here. Now he's talking to Mike Blanchard, the tournament referee on the other side of the court. There are Grand Prix rules, the first of which is a warning. Here's an important thing, Tony, that watch this now. Nastassi's has accepted it. He goes back ready to receive serve on the next point. Get a long shot here. And then suddenly Nastassi says McEnroe's taking too long. This is where the real trouble started. See Nastassi, we're ready to receive. McEnroe's going about some. Game McEnroe. That's where he gave him the game. This is where the crowd got upset. They felt Nastassi was ready to receive serves. Games of 3-1. And he shouldn't have been penalized. McEnroe leading. Judgment call. Four set. I think it should be made clear that there are specific rules and what those penalties are. Nuke, you want to explain that? First one being the warning, a point taken away, then a game taken away, and then the match will be defaulted, forfeited. There's a 30-second time clock in between points. And if you uh, are stalling or take extra time, it's taken away. So here Nastasi has said, okay, fine, you took the game away from... Um, I'm going to start serving. It's 3-1 down. If you can read lips, you might have gotten a little shot of what Nastasi said to Frank Hammond. Quiet, please. The crowd here wouldn't accept the fact that it was... Uh, that the penalty should have been against Nastasi. That it was 3-1. They started uh, a chant uh, during this time. You can't pick it up now, but saying... A little later on, the... Uh, and the funny thing was, you'll see some crowd shots here. Most of the irate people and the people yelling were the women in the stands, Tony. Well, they would like to make a comment about that. <laughs> How they were just, they were shouting, everyone was shouting at this stage. People and were shouting up here at us, saying, that's unfair, why don't you do something about it? McEnroe, as you see, just trying to stay calm, looking around. The Stassi can't do anything but sit, and Nork and Frank Hamm at this stage. It, it is out of control. But nothing at the has done was a violation of any rule. His decisions were correct. In my opinion, Pat, and we've said this before, it got away. Now the, cr the crowd clapping, rhythm clapping. And, uh, McEnroe here says, give me the balls. I'll uh, play the point again. Toss the balls up, and I'll just uh, play from 15 love on my serve. He gets the balls, and then Frank Hammond quite correctly says, no, you can't do that. I've the decision made the ruling, made. the decision's been made, and it should stick. But obviously there is no way to play with the conditions like this. stalemate at this point and it out comes Mike Blanchard the official referee of the tournament there is Bill Talbert tournament director in the pink shirt right behind Frank Hammond who has now arrived on the scene there he comes Mike Blanchard has asked for one of the microphones he can make an announcement to the crowd, but Frank Hammond says it is attached up here, folks. I can't get it down to hand it to you. Ladies. He thought it was a public address system, Mike. It's the wrong microphone. 
Ladies and gentlemen. Now he's got his things worked out. Yeah, he'll come off. He'll come off. Now they got to get a, a little step ladder for Mike Blanchard. And this, of course, all helped the chaos. In the meantime, the two players are standing. You want to listen when Mike Blanchard makes his appeal for quiet. You'll get a feel of the mood of the crowd. to continue the match unless you quiet down and the roar doubles. Three one. It's three one. It's three one now. We can, if they don't quiet down, we can cancel it. Um, Mike Blanchard again. Uh, on a microphone that does not tennis crowd, they're just you know they're not great. feed. Sure, absolutely. Yep. Yep. Again, uh, Mr. Blanchard cannot be heard. that unless they get some quiet, they down, they'll discontinue the match till tomorrow. And I think that just incited the fans more. They said, what are you talking about? We paid our money. We want to see this match. But they won't let him. That's right. And meanwhile, Nastasi and McEnroe have to just stand out in the court and wait. These uh, tennis fans are a little different, wouldn't you say? Well, they are. This is what you what you get when the, your sport grows, prize money grows. You build a stadium such as this to open it up to the mass market, and you get people that are not necessarily tennis aficionados. I have to wonder, though, Tony, if this would have happened in the daytime. That's a good Players point. Players ready. Sometimes there are some uh, you, things put down in the people's stomachs at nighttime that are not put down in the daytime. The crowd, by the way, that night was about 10,000. Now, Mike Blanchard is talking to the two players. Stassi's explaining to Mike Blanchard his version. Uh, All of a sudden, here is a spectator out of the stands. That fellow who joined him with a coat in his hand. He's not a, a tennis official of any kind. He's just got some ideas. He was Mike a, he's a Romanian. <laughs> and he came running. Mike Blanchard gave him a thumb, says, get out of here. And he went back, climbed over the rail, and got back in his box seat. That's Frank Smith there, a uh, Grand Prix supervisor, who was under the impression that he had the final say here at, uh, in the tournament, like they do in other tournaments. And yet the... Officials at the Open apparently felt that they had the final say. Am I correct in that, Tony? Yeah, well, we had some discussions about that, Nuke, as you know, afterwards with some of the officials, and not one individual came out and, and had the authority or took the authority to say, this is what's going to happen. Now you hear the crowd chanting, 2-1, 2-1. They don't want that game taken away from Nastasi. This, by the way, was going on about midnight, New York time. It's funny that a, a lot of fans have been wanting and demanding almost that why aren't there penalties given out? Why is something done about Mr. the players Stassi when they serving. use bad language or stall? And here's a case of a penalty being handed out and the crowd not wanting to accept it.
Thank Sam is saying, what can I do? Good. Now Frank Hens says, let's quit. You know, let's just suspend it till tomorrow. We're not going to get play. But you see, it's not his decision at this stage. It's back to the tournament. Now right. the fans are throwing cans and things onto the court. They bring out some police. You can see grounding, circling the court to make sure that other spectators don't come yeah. out of the stands. Here's an important thing now. Mike uh, Blanchard has walked over to the stars and he said, you've got to start playing. And the stars, he says, how can I start playing? They're throwing things down on the court and there's too much noise. And that's important because something's going to happen in a minute which is going to uh, set up another scene. Ladies and gentlemen, please. This has been about 15 or 16 minutes right. at this stage. Right. I get the feeling on John McEnroe's face. We can continue the match. It's the only way we can. I get the feeling. Look at John McEnroe there. I get the feeling he's saying, "Hey, is this where I grew up?" Okay. <laughs> These Ball the people, boys. my neighbors. Want to get the balls, please? Let's go. Frank Hammond doing his best to get well, the match I'm going trying. again. I'm trying. Three-one, Nastasi. Mike, let's quit. Again, he's saying let's quit. It is not 3-1 Nastasi, by the way. It's 3-1 yes. McEnroe. Here comes Mr. Blanchard again. I think what happens here, Mike comes out and says, start the 30-second clock on him. On Nastasi to force him to serve. Bill Talbert. No, he's calling the Stasi over. Uh, Billy, give him the Stasi the balls, please. And they've said to the Stasi, you, uh, we're starting the clock oh, on you. You have to serve. I know. I don't you think Mike serve. Blanchard realized at this point that this was the, would be the Stasi's third penalty, and they'd be forced to lose the set, and therefore the match. I understand. Frank now starts the uh, the clock on him. What they're trying to do is ask Nastasi to serve, hoping that a continuation of play would stop the crowd. So it's not my fault, I want to play. Now he's got the clock on him. 30 seconds was the time, but he actually gave him about a minute five. Give him the ball. You wonder what might have happened if Nastasi had gone and had him serve. Frank's almost begging with him to serve because he knows he has to call the match against him if he doesn't. He's still Game, set, match, McEnroe. A very tough decision for the umpire, Frank Hammond, and obviously a very unpopular one. Nastassi doesn't believe it. McEnroe says, what do I do? Throwing more things, trying to reach the court. Here comes uh, the tournament director, Bill Talbot, and he will re rescind that. Said, what do you mean you're yeah. calling the match on again? He just got, he just got called the match for me. That was Bill Talbert. Videotape again on Thursday night. And now Bill Talbert. And the ladder is back. For Frank Hammond to come down out of the chair. Well, the reason is, Bill said, Frank, if you get Dan off the chair, maybe they'll be quiet. And Frank said, well, I, you know, okay, let's do it. Bill maybe. Talbert was concerned about the crowd 
at this stage and he had to try to make some kind of a move to settle the crowd down. They have taken Frank Hammond out of the chair and the referee who is a long fire. Mike Blanchard is getting up into the chair. There's more photographers and this creates so much confusion. I feel at this stage they should have, you know, some things being thrown on the court. They should have cleared all those photographers back. People are standing on the court. You saw Mike Blanchard grinning. He's about the only one that was smiling at that time. Well, Nastasi said to him as he's getting in a chair, are you 85 or 90? And Mike Blanchard, who was one of the most highly respected officials in the game, just smiled at him. Absolute chaos at this point. And Nastasi even thinks it's sort of funny. Now they're saying 2-1. Two, 2-1 one. Two, one again. In no way was it funny. Quiet, please. Someone was saying, get the lines people back because that was McEnroe said, we don't have all the lines people on, and you'll see they actually start playing, and, and one linesman is not on the court. And we'll see that in a minute. Quiet, please. If you'll be a little more quiet, we will resume the match. That was 30 years ago, <laughs> and a wrestling match broke out, at least with the crowd. Uh, just for the record, John McEnroe went on to win that set 6-2 in the fourth and on to the U.S. Open Championship. We didn't see any tennis that whole thing. <laughs> there was no tennis play. And on a, a dozen it's years later, Ily Nastasi was inducted into the Tennis <laughs> Hall of Fame. And Nastasi was uh, back here the other night watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I you, you, you were the good guy. I, I, yeah, yeah. You say thank you for you, showing that. Why I did was, you provoke that? I don't understand why you got him all upset. <laughs> and you say, I, where do you think I learned it from? I mean, look at the master at work, Nastasi. I feel bad for the late Frank Hammond. I mean, he was actually the best umpire. I'm going to say something good about an umpire, Dick. The best right, umpire let, let we ever my had. Let on here. Yeah, a, 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 a player's umpire. He talked to us, and you could see by the end of that, he was literally begging. Uh, Ely to play, but Ely at that stage obviously was it was very late in his career and he was just looking to get things going a bit and he knew it didn't take too much to get under my skin. And I actually, looking back, quite proud that I ever you were kept good. myself yeah, semi together. He, he, he was you were the model. good one. But then he unleashed the lion. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, wait a second, well, I can, I can do our, that too. <laughs> as our coverage con continues, we're gonna look at another fiery wild character, Roger Federer. Uh, well, 